Hi, my name is Dawn, and I am coming to you today from the beautiful Treaty 6 land, homeland of the Métis, to bring you the first ever episode of Adventurologist. Adventurologist will be a new monthly program, so mark your calendars. It's Earth Science Week, and so I wanted to chat about something that's been on my mind, which is fires. This year, we have had 608 fires in our province. Now, normally, for the last five years or so, there have been about 300 fires a year. So we're double what is normal for our province. I'm not sure if you noticed all of the smoke this summer, but I certainly did. But today I want to talk about intentional fires, not fires that were accidentally started, but fires that are intentionally started and they're called prescribed fires. And so I chatted with a fellow named Dinyar from the Canadian Prairies Prescribed Fire Exchange, and he told me so many awesome things. And I cannot possibly fit all of those into this video today. But if you have questions or comments, Dinyar has offered to answer those or find someone who could. So please comment or add your questions at the end of this video. These prescribed fires can actually help manage not having so many out of control, intense wildfires. Because we're adventurologists, let's go on an adventure. Our adventure today has brought us to Beaver Creek Conservation Area and you'll see all around me are the grasslands. Do you know what endangered means? Endangered means that an animal or an insect or a plant or an ecosystem is in danger of being lost. And according to the Nature Conservancy of Canada, our grasslands are the most endangered ecosystem in the world. Not every type of grassland is being threatened. But I think it's important that we understand that this ecosystem is very important and that we work towards preserving it so that the animals who rely on it will also be safe. This is an area of Beaver Creek that hasn't had any maintenance happen to it. So it's just left naturally. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of bushes that have grown up. So I'd like to imagine for a moment that you and I are white-tailed deer. So would this be a great place to live, do you think, if you were a deer? It looks like a pretty great place to live. The river is just down the hill so you could get water. But where would you sleep? Hmm. The brush has really taken over and so there isn't really a good place on the ground for a deer to sleep, is there? What do you think you'd eat if you lived in this area of Beaver Creek? There's not really a lot of space for grass to grow. The ground is pretty covered, isn't it? So there isn't really a lot for deer to eat. They really like eating tree shoots and they like eating grasses, but it would be really hard for them to find something to eat in this specific area of Beaver Creek. Luckily here at Beaver Creek, they work really hard to keep the land balanced and restored. And they do that through all sorts of different methods. My favorites are sheep grazing, which is actually happening this fall. So you can check their website and see when sheep grazing is happening. And also with prescribed fires, which is what we wanna talk about today. So what is a prescribed fire? A prescribed fire is a very intentional fire. The experts can't just go and light a fire anywhere they want. They actually need to develop a whole plan. And in that plan, they need to have the who, so who will be there to help with the fire. They also need to let the local authorities know they have to have a safety plan so that the fire department is notified of what's happening. They also have to notify all of the people that own land around where they plan to do the burn. They also need to specify a window of time. Generally, they don't pick just one day because if you woke up on that day and it was raining or super windy, that wouldn't make for a safe prescribed fire. So they generally pick a period of time and during that time, they'll pick the best day to do their fire. They also need to explain why they want to do the fire in that space. They can't just have fires willy nilly whenever they want to. They need to explain what's there that they want to uh, control or maintain. Maybe there's an invasive grass, kind of like an invading grass that's invaded the entire space and none of the other grasses can grow. Or maybe there's just a buildup of fuel. So if a fire hasn't come through for a very, very long time, there will be lots of logs and trees and debris on the ground that could cause a larger, more intense fire if it started accidentally. So in that case, maybe they would do a prescribed fire in that area to make sure that if an accidental fire started, it was easier to control. 
Fire may seem like it's very hard to control and to keep to a certain area for us because we don't really understand fire, but there are people that study how it works and how to manage it, and they're able to light these fires and keep it within a very specific range. They're able to make sure that these fires happen in a very safe and productive manner. Now imagine if they had done a prescribed burn in this area. So a fire had come through that was very controlled. What would this area look like? How would it be different if a fire went through? Well, I'd imagine all the dead grasses would be burnt, which would leave room for new growth, new grasses, different types of grasses and plants to grow that the animals could eat. And also probably any of the dead shrubs would be gone, which would also leave space for animals to wander. Deer could actually wander through this area and it wouldn't be so tight. Indigenous peoples used fire on the land to rejuvenate and balance things. And they understood the relationship between healthy land, healthy animals, healthy people. There's a great book called Muskrats in Fire by Rene Callier that Dinyar suggested that I read. And it's an awesome book explaining this whole relationship and how they used fire to create that healthy environment for the animals. Depending on the type of grassland, a natural cycle for fire coming through might have been every three to 10 years. Um, but when settlers came, they were a little afraid of fire, as you and I might be, and so they actually banned the use of fire. They didn't want fire close to their homes or on their land, so they stopped it. And it disrupted the natural cycle of fire. And what happened was there was more deadfall, there was more dead grasses, and so when fires started accidentally, they were more intense than they had been before. Behind me is a space that's set up for sheep grazing right now, but this was also a space that had a burn, a prescribed burn this spring. And as you can tell, it looks really healthy. There's lots of things growing. There's lots of new grasses growing and little tiny shrubs, which would be food for all of the animals. This is an area of Beaver Creek behind me where they had a prescribed burn two years ago. You may wonder what happens to the animals and the insects and the birds when a prescribed fire is lit. Well, those that can hop or fly or run away would do so. And those that can't have adapted to be able to survive because fire was a natural part of living on the prairies. And so some of them burrow into the ground. And Dinyar tells me that fire can only burn until the mineral layer of soil. And here, the mineral layer of soil is actually right at the top. So fire would burn everything above the soil, but nothing in the soil which means that all of those animals and insects that burrow would be totally safe. At the beginning of the video, we talked about how the grasslands are one of the most threatened ecosystems in the entire world. So through people caring about them and educating themselves about them, and through these professionals using their management techniques, which include sheep grazing and the prescribed burns, hopefully we can maintain and grow the grasslands in Saskatchewan. I hope that through the video today you've also seen how prescribed burns can help manage uh, the grasslands so that it's a really healthy place for the animals and birds and insects to live. And also that having prescribed burns means that there won't be that buildup of fuel for fires. And so if they do start accidentally, hopefully they're a lot more manageable. The city of Saskatoon has plans to do five small-scale prescribed burns in city parks during October and November of this year. So if you happen across one of those, obviously watch from a safe distance, but it would be really, really cool to see a prescribed burn in real life. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much to Dinyar and the staff at Beaver Creek and my friend Matthew for helping me get in touch with everyone. Have a great day. Remember to leave us your questions.